weeks. And this uh, collaboration with uh, Diego Redigolo is uh, now at CERN, Robert Ziegler in uh, Germany, Karlsruhe, and uh, Jure Zupan from the University of uh, Cincinnati. Um, well, you see the title is about uh, flavor, lepton flavor violation uh, into axon like particles. And if you don't know, my university is in Tianjin, uh, which is a a city not far from Beijing, about 100 kilometers far from Beijing. Um, oops, okay. Uh, well, the motivation in general for any, any discussion, any study on lepton flavor relation is that uh, neutrinos oscillates because they are ma massive. And these already tell us that the, the the lepton family numbers are not conserved, quantum numbers. Um, so a natural question is whether this violation of the lepton family numbers could occur and could be observed also in processes involving uh, charged leptons alone, uh, like a decay of the muon into an electron and a photon, new to gamma, or similar processes possibly involving also the tau. <coughs> um, well, in the standard model, we know that this is actually the case. This can happen, uh, although the, the, the effects are hugely suppressed. Uh, the point is that, uh, well, neutrinos, mass eigenstates, uh, can couple to, to leptons of different flavors uh, through the uh, angles, entries of the, of the PMNS matrix. So you can, you can draw diagrams of this kind uh, where through a W exchange, you indeed uh, transmit the, uh, the fact that uh, neutrino mass eigenstates are superpositions of different flavors you transmit it to charged leptons. Uh, although numerically these contributions uh, are negligible because they are suppressed in the rate by the fourth power of the neutrino masses, well, the neutrino mass differences, more precisely, over the fourth power of the, of the W mass. Uh, so it's this large separation of scales that makes uh, rates of processes like mu to gamma or tau to gamma, tau to mu gamma, uh, so tiny that they will never be observed experimentally. Like 30, well, more 40 orders of magnitude below the uh, sensitivity of our present experiments. Um, but notice that this is not due to the fact that, again, uh, lepton family numbers are, are to a good approximation conserved. On the contrary, I mean, the PMNS mixing angles are large, so the, 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 the violation of the lepton family number is large, is order one. <clears throat> so the mixing is large. What is, uh, makes these processes suppressed is this ratio of scales, which could be considered an, an, an accident of, of the standard model. Or anyway, in general, if you have new physics at the TV scale or not very far from the TV scale, uh, there is no reason why such a kind of suppression should occur. Uh, so you, you would expect much larger effects. And in the good old times of supersymmetry, that was typical argument. If you take the same diagram and inside the loop, you substitute the particles with the supersymmetric partners, uh, then, of course, you don't have uh, such suppression anymore. Your, your rate just depends on basically the misalignment in the flavor space of your supersymmetric leptons, the leptons and the, and the, and the lepton mass matrices. <clears throat> and if this uh, mixing, so if, the, if this misalignment is actually order one, so if you have an anarchical flavor structure, you would have observed mu to gamma decades ago. Uh, these processes would be very, very uh, much, much larger than, than the present 
uh, than the present limits. Uh, and this is kind of generic for any new physics that couples in a flavorful, let's call it flavorful way uh, to, the, uh, to the standard model leptons. Um, because you don't have basically a standard model background, then if you observe processes of this kind, uh, it would be a clear signal of new physics, so with no doubts, so that would be uh, a very uh, important uh, result. Um, and as I was mentioning, any new physics coupling to leptons uh, should face its challenge actually by uh, <clears throat> processes of this kind. And since the loop suppression and since the present bounds are very stringent, actually you can test, uh, thanks to these processes, scales that are way above the scales that we can uh, directly test at colliders. So even of the order of hundreds of thousands of TV. So they are a very sensitive probe for new physics and new physics scales. And we have experiments running and we had, we have been having experiments actually for the past 70 years. So the first experiments on setting a, a, a limit on mutual gamma were performed by Ponte Corvo in the, in, the, in the 40s, soon after the war. Uh, and we have reached sensitivities, which are at the level, for instance, in the two gamma of 10 to the minus 13 and, um, and extension or, or, or future experiments that are, uh, that are being built at the moment uh, could improve on, on, on these processes by, uh, in some cases, by several orders of magnitudes. So this is the time scale of the present uh, projects. Uh, well, what's important for us is that in the, during this decade, in the 20s, uh, there will be a, a very rich experimental activity. And uh, as I already mentioned, uh, some of these processes uh, will really go beyond the present bounds by two or even three orders of magnitude. So this is the general motivation uh, why I find this, this topic of interest uh, although today uh, I'm taking a slightly different point of view. So namely that the processes, let's call them the standard lepton fluorylating processes, I mentioned mu2 gamma, mu2 three, uh, are definitely a, a place where you should, we should keep searching. Uh, but there is a possibility that we have not uh, found signs of lepton fluorylation yet because we were not looking uh, in the right place or not well enough, not uh, with enough sensitivity in the, uh, in the right place. Um, so the idea is to assume that what couples to leptons in a flavor regulating way uh, is actually a light particle, a light invisible particle that for the moment I'm just calling A so light means uh, lighter than the, than the lepton masses, lighter than the tau, possibly of the muon, and invisible because of course, neutral with no, no electric charge, uh, but also weakly coupled in, uh, in any sense. So uh, if you want something that long is long lived enough that leaves the detectors of this, uh, flavor violating experiments without being detected. So it just look like missing energy. So if this is the starting point, you see that the dominant modes for a charge lepton fluorization would rather be something like this. So actually your muon or tau decays into the light invisible particle, uh, plus of course a lighter lepton and possibly radiating a gamma too. So like this mu to E gamma A process. Um, and this setup also would lead to an interesting interplay with cosmology or astrophysics, because of course, if this object is long lived enough uh, at the level of cosmological scales, 
uh, it could be a dark matter candidate. Uh, and anyway, in something light, uh, it's something not very weakly coupled, so it can be uh, produced in, uh, in stars and leave the star like neutrinos. So it's a subject to bounce from, from star cooling. So uh, whatever we do uh, with, these, uh, uh, with these rare processes, uh, we should then compare the sensitivity uh, to, to astrophysical uh, bounds. <clears throat> um, so why uh, this particle should be light uh, and feebly coupled? Well, the most natural uh, setup to obtain, uh, 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 to obtain new physics of this kind is when you have a pseudo nabu Gaussian boson. So if you have a, a, a new global symmetry, a new global U1, which is spontaneously broken. Uh, so this, what I have in mind here is nabu Gaussian boson, or as people sometimes call them, axion-like particle, okay? I'm trying to discuss in a, uh, in a generic way, in a model independent way, as much as I can, although I will give examples. Um, <clears throat> but, well, I want to point out already that this kind of setup, it really can uh, cover a, a wide range of, of, speci of specific and, and, and quite well-motivated uh, new physics model. So depending on what is your symmetry, uh, then you will have uh, particles that for what concern us tend to behave in the same way. So global symmetry have associated number ghost and boson. People have given uh, different names. Uh, usually the symmetries do something something else, of course, so like they check in, they, strong, they solve the strong CP problem, or they provide an explanation for the fermion masses and mixing. But anyway, the common feature is that you have something that is uh, pseudo number goes on boson, that it's, that it's light and, and feebly coupled. Uh, so we are going to write a generic Lagrangian, okay, uh, of the coupling of this particle to the standard model lens. Uh, well, so you see, this is a, uh, we are coupling, uh, it, it's a derivative coupling, so we are coupling the, uh, the derivative of uh, the Seldon and Bogoston boson to a vector or an axial vector current uh, of the standard model lens. Um, we write it in this way, uh, you know, th there could be a so called Higgs basis, so, so we, we could write X scalar and pseudo scalar uh, coupling instead. But this is preferable because you already see that this uh, respect is a shift symmetry. So it is really uh, a, a Gaussian boson. Actually, I mean, it would be massless, would have no potential unless you have some possibly small explicit breaking of the symmetry, which could be well, explicit, put by hand, or or it could be it could arise by uh, uh, as an effect of anomalies, like uh, like the, the the case of the axon. Okay, um, <clears throat> and then you see the couplings uh, uh, of this object are suppressed by uh, this uh, scale F A that we could call it the axon-like particle uh, decay constant. And it's just or related to the uh, breaking scale of your new global symmetry. Uh, and this provides uh, suppression of the couplings. If the scale is large, then, uh, then these interactions are suppressed. So this is why the object is light and weakly coupled uh, in a natural way. So now we ask, uh, why you see here, I wrote the, the, the two couplings, the vectorial and the, and the axial coupling as general uh, matrices uh, in flavor. So possibly coupling to <coughs> leptons of different families. So now we can ask ourselves, why should be so? Why this uh, uh, coupling should have off diagonal entries? So it should uh, violate 
the flavor numbers. Uh, I will show you a couple of examples where this occurs because, yeah, this is a kind of generic actually uh, outcome of these classes of models uh, in several situations. For instance, it's automatic if you have, uh, if your standard model lepton charges under this new U1 uh, are not universal in flavor. So different families carry different quantum numbers, different charges under this new U1. Like Peche Queen, for instance. If you have an axial model with a, uh, Peche Queen charges of the muon, of the electron, of the tau, which are different. Automatically, you get off diagonal entries here, lepton flavor violating uh, interactions uh, of your acting like particle with the standard model leptons. Or alternatively, even in cases that these, the charges are uh, flavor universal, uh, well, loops, uh, radiative effects can induce uh, flavor violation. So the first example, I will be quick on this. It's just based on uh, uh, flavor models. So model of flavors, meaning models that aim at giving, at accounting for the hierarchies we observe uh, in fermion masses and mixing. So the, try to, to explain the fact that uh, the top quark is much heavier than the charm quark, is much heavier, much heavier than the up quark, and the pattern uh, of this uh, uh, mass matrices, so of the Yukawas, of the Yukawa matrices of the standard model, seem to be, uh, well, the, the, this hierarchy seems to be uh, quite specific to, could be a hint of some organized uh, So can we hear each other? I can, yeah. Oh, okay, so it's just to speak yeah. with lost contact too. That's unfortunate. Um, Okay, I think he uh, he will reload. So I'll stop um, recording and then resume it. Um, so I was telling you about forgetness and models before uh, being uh, cut off. Uh, so I was mentioning that indeed you you introduce a new symmetry that forbids the the mass terms, the standard model mass terms of fermions, and then they arise as higher dimensional operators once you break the symmetry, so as powers of the vacuum expectation value of some new scalar fields, typically called flavons, that break this asymmetry. <clears throat> so they are higher dimensional operators, so they are suppressed by a certain cutoff, uh, which is somehow larger than, than your vacuum expectation value. So this ratio is a small expansion parameter. So the game is just choosing the symmetry and the transformation properties of your fields, of your fermions, under this asymmetry, uh, such that you obtain uh, the right uh, suppression. So um, your, um, the, the, your charge assignment is such that you are obtaining small numbers for uh, lighter generations. So uh, you have 
uh, small you have a coupling for the up core, for instance, where the top core should be over one. So in these general classes of model, the many explicit realization has been built of all kinds. So here we are interested, of course, if having a global symmetry and in particular a U1, so, which was in fact the, 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 the original, the, the symmetry employed by the original uh, proposal by Frogenitz. So just a, a new global charge. You can assign charges to your quarks, for instance, different families would carry a different charge. So in entry of Yukawa uh, coupling then uh, is just uh, suppressed by, in terms of the, of the charge, of some of the charges uh, of your uh, standard model fermions. Um, you can do this also in the lepton sector. Uh, in such a case, the best thing you can do is to obtain a let's say, anarchical uh, PMNS matrix. So these are not very predictive models with this respect, but if you assign to the left-handed lepton doublets uh, the same charges or charges that are not very different uh, for, the, for, the, for the three generations, uh, then you see from here what you are getting for your neutrino mass matrix is uh, well, basically, uh, an archive of level strata um, entries all uh, more or less of the same of the same order. So you get order one mixing angles, which is what we observe in first approximation. Uh, and then you can choose the charges of the right-handed uh, leptons instead to obtain hierarchical uh, um, masses for the charged leptons. Um, why this is interesting? Because this field that, uh, whose web is, uh, is entering this uh, organism mechanism, but actually spontaneously break the symmetry. So the, the imaginary part of, the, of, the, of this scalar field, of if you prefer its phases, is precisely a, a pseudo nambu boson uh, what people have called a famylon in the past. So the, 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 the axon light particle from a, a, a family symmetry. And, and if you write it, it, it's coupling uh, to two leptons, it actually has the, uh, uh, the structure that we have written before uh, with the suppression given by the vacuum expectation value of the, of the flame of fields. But what's interesting now is that the, this, uh, the couplings are by construction fluororegulating. Uh, because you can write uh, the couplings to the vector and the axial current in terms of the charges you assigned uh, to, uh, to your standard model leptons. <clears throat> and then you rotate to the, to the basis, you rotate your fermions to the basis where the, uh, the Yukawa couplings, so the, the, the lepton masses are diagonal, so lepton mass basis. Uh, so these uh, rotations, these matrices are unitary matrices. Um, but you see, by construction, at least in the right hand sector here, you need your charges to be different for different families because you have to explain the hierarchies. <laughs> so the off diagonal entries of this uh, of this uh, matrix uh, are not zero, are actually proportional to uh, differences of, of charges. If instead you have a, a, a universal charges, so your, this matrix is proportional to the unit matrix, of course, by unitarity, then the off diagonal entries would be zero, but this is not the case in general. So you see, flavor non universal charges imply flavor violating couplings. And in models of this kind, it's unavoidable. So what you get is indeed uh, decays of muons or taus into the axon like particle uh, and the, and the lepton, uh, a lighter lepton. <clears throat> and another example is given by, by the Majoron. So the, uh, the pseudonym boson of a broken. Uh, uh, lepton number, 
And this occurs, for instance, in the simplest uh, uh, realization, the type 1 CISO, you just introduce uh, right-handed neutrinos, and the right-handed neutrinos must have, so it's a heavy Majorana must have, that indeed gives a breaking of, uh, uh, of the left on the um, And then you have the usual system mechanism, you, you, you obtain your light uh, uh, masses for the, for the acting neutrinos. Uh, now you can promote this parameter or these parameters here to uh, well, a dynamical field. So what you do is to uh, spontaneously break the lepton number. So introduce a, a scalar field whose VEV uh, gives rise to the uh, Majorana mass, uh, mass terms. So you spontaneously break the lepton number. So you see in this case, uh, the three uh, generation of leptons have all the same charge because the lepton number is the same, so muon, electron, and tau, of course. Uh, but your myon will couple to right-handed neutrinos in this, in this way, and right-handed neutrinos can couple through a small mixing uh, they have with the active neutrinos, they can couple to the two gauge bosons. So you can write diagrams of this kind that is in particular with the W exchange, you can couple <coughs> your myron to leptons of different flavors. So also in this case is, uh, well, it's a natural consequence to have lepton flavor regulating couplings of this axion like particle. So now we are uh, uh, attempting a model independent approach of this. So without discussing uh, further the origin of this, of this Lagrangian, we, we want to study its phenomenology. So if you have a coupling like that, I, as I said, you gener generically induce a, a, a two-body lepton flow in the case that you can write, uh, whose rate is, is, is written here. And you see the, uh, this, the, the decay is controlled by this uh, parameter uh, f, which is actually a, a, a scale, so it's a dimension full parameter. So we can call it an effective lepton flow relating scale, which is just given by your usual <coughs> uh, scale related to the U1 uh, breaking, uh, uh, and this combination of uh, this. Uh, uh, these couplings. So now our goal would be to, to constrain this, uh, these parameters, so to see which experiments can, in the past, can uh, uh, have searched for something like that, and what are the future prospects, since, as I was mentioning uh, at the beginning, we have a, a, a new generation of very sensitive uh, lepton uh, flavor uh, experiments. Lepton flavor violating experiment. Okay, so first of all, what, what is the signal of, of a process like this? So for the moment, we, we focus mo mostly on, on mu. So mu to E uh, axion, axion like particle. Uh, of course, it's a two body decay, so you have a monochromatic positron. Uh, well, unlike the standard model, the usual standard model decay of the muon, and the position of, uh, of this peak, of this uh, monochromatic line, of course, is given by, uh, by the mass of the axion like particle. In particular, if it is massless or practically massless, uh, it would be a, um, a monochromatic positron at the end point of the, of the usual uh, uh, muon decay spectrum, the so-called Michel spectrum. Okay, so half of the muon mass, of course. And then you can write the, its differential decay rate as well, uh, which depends on the, uh, on the kind of coupling, so of the, of the chirality of the coupling. Um, I will come back to this in a minute, because this is actually also what happens in the case of, of ordinary muon decay. <clears throat> so you have a term which depends on the, on, which has an angular dependence, if you have polarized muons to decay with, and this, uh, this 
P is the polarization. Uh, so in this case, um, you have an angular dependence. In general, these kind of experiments always employ very highly polarized muons because they're indeed produced uh, by uh, proton uh, beams hitting a target. So um, in the target, they produce pions. And <clears throat> most of these pions are uh, actually the so-called surface pions, or they are at rest at the surface of the, of the production target. So a pion that decays at rest, indeed, gives you a, a muon, uh, which, is, which is basically 100% polarized. Okay? So your muon beams are polarized. And, and this is very interesting in this context, because you see from this formula, if this P is one, well, actually minus one, the, the polarization is anti-parallel to the uh, anti-muon uh, uh, momentum. When you go to the forward direction, so as this cos theta is equal uh, one, um, at the end point of the initial spectrum, so when you approach half of the muon mass, uh, the number of events goes to zero, okay? So you see it from, uh, uh, from, from this formula. So again, if you look at the maximally energetic positrons in the forward direction, uh, if your beam is polarized to a to, to, to large extent, uh, you have a suppression. So this is shown in the, by this plot. So this means that well, depending on how your signal, what is the anisotropy of your signal, and this is given by this combination of a vector and axial couplings, you may uh, uh, have a situation where uh, in the forward direction, you, you, you can observe a peak. So you can observe a, a monochromatic positron. Uh, well, in a situation where you have no or very suppressed background from the ordinary uh, standard model decay. And this idea was employed already well, uh, more than 30 years ago in an experiment um, performed at Triumph in Canada uh, using a 10 to the seven very highly polarized uh, antimuons um, and a very, well, a, a spectrometer uh, with a very, very uh, good momentum resolution. So indeed, they were looking, among other things, uh, for a peak at the end of this, uh, at the end point of the spectrum that, again, in the forward direction uh, goes to zero. So you see, you need a good momentum resolution to separate for this, uh, for this uh, decaying background, of course, and they have a very good one. Uh, and so they were just collecting uh, uh, the, the, the positron in the forward direction, focusing with magnets, so uh, basically increasing the geometrical acceptance, and, and then uh, conveying them into a, 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 to a, a very sensitive spectrum. So what they did was then, well, observing no events, of course, and they set a bound on uh, a decay of this kind at the level of 10 to the minus six. Of course, these, they interpreted in terms of an isotropic uh, signal. So if this term here is a zero, because one of the two coupling is a suppressed. Um, so in such a case, you, you, you get this bound. Um, Otherwise, uh, if you have a different uh, uh, anisotropy, uh, you, you, you would have a different number here. And in particular, notice that if your object couples uh, V minus A, so exactly like the standard model, just to left-handed currents, uh, then also the signal will be suppressed in the forward direction as the standard model background. So you are not sensitive to that combination of coupling. Otherwise, if there is at least some uh, um, amount of right-handed current coupling, uh, you 
from this search, you could set the limit. And in the isotropic case, then you can translate into a limit of our scale, of our effective uh, flavor violating scale. And you see the bound is, uh, uh, is already quite stringent at the level of 10 to the 9 GeV. There were more modern experiments, but employ not, not really more, uh, many more uh, muons. Uh, so this one was called twist. Uh, uh, also performed a, a, a triumph. They were measuring basically the, the parameters of the, of the standard model uh, muon decay, looking possibly for deviation like the right handed currents. But they also interpreted the result in terms of a search into an uh, invisible uh, particle and the monochromatic photon. The good thing is that they did it also not only at the end point, but all the way over the spectrum. So they were looking, uh, they were looking also for a massive, possibly massive axon-like particle. And they could, they had also some sensitivity in the case of a standard model like capping. So even if your uh, axon-like particle couples uh, to a V minus A count. So in that case, if the object is all practically massless, then this, uh, this experiment provides the only existing bounds on a, a V minus A coupling. And well, it's uh, at the level of something 10 to the minus five. So weaker, but still in this situation is the only, is the only constraint we have. And it can again be translated into, into a bound on the scale at the level of 10 to the nine G. Then there were also surges you see again very old for the for the decay, uh, including one photon. I'm not going to detail because I'm a little bit late. So this can be translated into again a bound on mu to EA and and provide a constraint on the scale. The good thing of this kind of process is that does not really depend of the nature of the coupling. So this is uh, more more slightly weaker, but more model independent. And there were also searches for the tau decays, but not even the, bell, uh, the B factor is, did that. So the, the, the latest we have was actually from an experiment at DAISY uh, with really a, one thousandth of the, the, the taus that later the, the B factor is collected. So not surprisingly, they have limits on this branching ratio only at the level of 10 to the minus three. Um, so all in all, we can put everything together uh, and show what are the, the constraints of the different entries of these of this, uh, couplings, uh, which again, they have uh, some dependence on, on the anisotropy of the signal. Uh, we reinterpret uh, the, if, uh, the, the, the UDD result if uh, the, your current is V plus A uh, of the V plus A kind, and we collected all the other bounds and, well, yeah, translated into bounds on these uh, flavor violating scales. So the interesting thing now would be to compare these bounds with the, uh, although they uh, refer to different, uh, to different entries of, of, of these matrices, of course, tau E, mu E, so, to compare with the, with the flavor conserving one, so namely with the coupling of the axon light particle to electrons. Because as was, I was mentioning before, uh, you're in, inside stars, you can have processes of this kind, but X typically is, uh, is nucleus. Uh, so uh, you can radiate, if this object couples to, to electrons, you can radiate it and then if, you, uh, if it is light enough that can be produced uh, inside the star, so uh, lighter than the, than the average temperature uh, inside the star, this provides a quite uh, stringent constraint because astrophysicists have been observing the stellar evolution and uh, this would uh, give a too fast uh, cooling uh, 
uh, rates of, of the star. Okay, so this translates into a bound again at the level of 10 to the minus 9 GV for the coupling uh, to electron. And there are even hints from a global fit of uh, several stellar systems, in particular white dwarf, that it would be welcome to have some source of non standard cooling because apparently. Uh, from these studies, the, 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 the white dwarfs seem to cool down a bit too fast compared to the standard process, which we would be just radiating neutrinos. So now the idea is to see if uh, the present, well, you need, first of all, a specific model that uh, relates the different entries of this matrix because only within a specific model, I can tell you which of this bound is more relevant at present, uh, because I need to, to know how the coupling to mu, mu and electron is related to the coupling to two electrons. <clears throat> and then I want to see if future experiments can uh, uh, be sensitive enough to test these models uh, better than uh, than the, the star systems, so go beyond the stars, so and possibly uh, well, find uh, test the the, the 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 possibility of a non-standard uh, cooling. So the future experiments uh, are going to to set limits. For instance, this new two three experiment looking for new one two three electrons will set a limit of the level 10 to the minus 15. So basically employing 10 to the eight muon per second, which is basically in one second, the whole luminosity of the old experiments I discussed. So we expect that this new generation experiment can really improve by several orders of magnitude the old limits, because I show you the, the, the experiments were uh, either old or quite, uh, or quite uh, well with low sensitivity. So uh, modern experiments will, will use very intense uh, neon beams. So there was a study uh, made by, a, uh, well, in a, in a PhD thesis for the new two-three experiments, precisely uh, for a search of, of a bump of this kind. So again, the two-body decay into an invisible particle and, and the positron. Uh, all over the the, uh, the muon spectrum, so for a bump on the ordinary uh, standard model uh, muon decay, trying to avoid the bottleneck of trigger, so using just uh, the so-called momentum histograms. So apparently the experiment is going to collect, to, 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 to feel some information, not all of that, but some information on the positron tracks into an online field uh, table, okay? Uh, so without the need of triggering an, an event and using uh, this, well, poor information, but with a large number of muon, you can perform a search. And well, this was her, uh, uh, her estimate of the, of the possible sensitivity of uh, mu to three for, for this kind of process using basically 10 to the 15 muons. And compared to the twist result is an improvement by three orders of magnitude or so. Uh, well, again, because they, they are going to, to use a factor 10 to the seven more muons. Uh, and, and you see this is a, a, a limit, a future limit, as a function of the of the invisible particle mass, uh, of course you lose the sensitivity when when, when you are approaching the the, the, the the muon mass itself, but <clears throat> and you have some problem with calibration if the object is too light or let's say practically massless, because it's the uh, in such a case the, the the signal would be at the at the endpoint on the peak of the emission spectrum. And this position here of this peak is uh, used to calibrate the, 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 the experiment, typically. So to, 
calibrate the, the measurement of the positron momentum itself. So in this case, you should calibrate and perform a bump search at the same time. So you introduce systematics. So this is why this red curve shows that there is a loss of sensitivity for, uh, for light, axon light particle. If the experiment will be able to find alternative calibration, means of calibration, then you could, um, you could improve by a farther on the even if this is not the case, in principle, you see still the improvement will be, will be huge with respect to the, to the previous bounds. So we will push uh, the, the constraints on this, on, this, uh, on this U1 breaking scale by one order of magnitude or more. <clears throat> then there is also the MEG experiment. They provided the best, uh, the, the, the present best bound on the mu 2 e gamma. Uh, well, actually the best bound ever on any chart lepton flavorevaluating uh, process. And they are uh, about to start the so-called MEG2, so uh, second run of the experiment with the uh, improved uh, detector. So in their case, of course, the signature is a back-to-back -back photon and, and positron. Uh, so they trigger on the photon. So we cannot really perform a search on the old data. We should use, uh, we should, we are proposing actually a dedicated search for, uh, for the axon-like particles. So actually a search that would mimic the old search by the uh, UDD et al collaboration. Uh, so we are proposing to use their apparatus, um, adding, a, a forward calorimeter. So a calorimeter in the forward direction that could really, again, for a practically massless action like particle, uh, take advantage of, advantage of the fact that the, uh, the standard model background, because the muons are polarized, goes to zero in this direction. So it's an idea we had discussing with actually some, uh, some members of the MEG collaboration. Um, so we estimated what what could be the the the, uh, the, the sensitivity of uh, of an experimental setup of this kind. So uh, inserting uh, like ten centimeter radius uh, crystal um, uh, crystal calorimeter, liso uh, crystal calorimeter. Uh, about one, 1.5 meters from the stopping target. Um, and here uh, I show uh, the acceptance of the of signal and background as a function of the positron momentum resolution that such calorimeter uh, would have. <coughs> the blue lines are uh, the acceptance of the signal. So basically it's just based on the geometrical acceptance. Uh, on the number of uh, positron signal positrons that would uh, reach uh, this position here, that they differ depending on how uh, the axon-like particle couples, so either isotropically or with a, two, a V plus A current, and there is a slight difference. And we compare it with the, uh, with the background that gets better suppressed, of course, the better the momentum resolution is, um, because then you can better distinguish the decaying uh, background from, from, from a peak at the end point. Uh, so I plot in two lines because it also depends very uh, sensitively on, the, on how well you control the polarization. So if you're uh, muons are highly polarized or you have a larger uncertainty on their polarization. <clears throat> so depending then on, on the, the characteristic of the signal and the, the polarization and other experimental details, we could estimate again as a function of the momentum resolution, what could be uh, the reach of um, basically just two weeks of dedicated run at the end of the, of the MEG2 experiment. So just with 10 to the eight muons per second, uh, so reaching like 10 to the 14 muons in total. This is how 
powerful are these experiments. So even if you have not a very uh, good momentum resolution uh, in this calorimeter, uh, still we, we estimate that with just a couple of weeks of the dedicated run, you could improve even by one order of magnitude or, or better the present limits. And of course, the B factories could analyze their data that they have already to look for the tau decays. There were a simulation made by members of the Bell collaboration of what could be the reach. And we can also extrapolate it, of course, to the 15 versus Aptoban, that could be possibly the, the final uh, luminosity of, uh, of Bell 2 experiment. Uh, <clears throat> and this would give a substantial improvement also on the tau uh, modes. Um, just one slide about the stellar bounds. Uh, anyway, I'm approaching the conclusions. Um, as I was saying, we have limits from star cooling. So this we can take from the literature. The white dwarf limit is slightly more stringent than the uh, red giants. Although, the, of course, the temperatures of the two systems are different. So uh, the white dwarfs will, uh, uh, will be better for lighter and sunlight particles, while the, uh, the, the limit from red giant will extend to slightly heavier uh, objects. And then there was this one sigma favorite range by that global fit that I mentioned before. Uh, now we want to plot them as a function of the mass. So we have to take into account the Boltzmann suppression if you have a substantially massive action like particle. So we basically just need to take this number here and rescale them using this ratio. So it's a, a rescale the energy loss uh, which is proportional to one over f squared, uh, <clears throat> using a ratio of the energy density inside the star of a massive uh, axon light particle divided by uh, the equivalent quantity if the object is massless. And we can find expression like this in the literature and use it to extrapolate these bounds to massive alps. And we can even use the supernova uh, 87 constraint, uh, again, as a constraint on the coupling to electrons, okay? Although we are, we are in a highly degenerate uh, plasma, somehow, uh, still, this process can occur. So, and the temperature of this proton neutral star after the, uh, the supernova, soon after the supernova explosion, is much higher than than the 10 keV or keV uh, temperature of red giants and white dwarfs. So uh, we expect a weak bounds. We, we use it, well, using this, we, we estimate it using this formula for the energy loss in highly degenerate condition. But the bound that extends to much heavier axion like particles. So if, if the object is more or less massless, then this is the, the estimate of the bound we get, a couple of order of magnitude below the uh, red giants and white dwarfs. But as I was saying, this we will extend up to order 100 MeV instead of tens of keV. So if we put everything together, okay, here I can plot the bound on this U1 breaking scale F. Well, if we take all the couplings equal to one, both the flavor regulating and flavor conserving, then I was mentioning in a given model, these, the, the, the relative weights of these constraints will be rescaled because you, perhaps the flavor regulating model will be suppressed by some mixing angle compared to the flavor conserving model. <clears throat> but to visualize in a model independent way, all the bounds together, um, we just take all this coupling equal to one. Uh, and then you see here, the, for instance, the green line is the old UDD experiments, three lines for three different possible uh, couplings of two, two leptons, so V plus A, V minus A, isotropic. Uh, the same for the twist bound. So you see there is a complementarity. Uh, the older experiment is, tend to be more sensitive, but uh, 
uh, for a heavier uh, action like particle is the second experiment that has a, a better sensitivity in the region of the parameter space. And this uh, orange and red lines are the, uh, for different experimental setups of our proposal uh, for mu 3 are the possible uh, uh, future sensitivities. And we compare these with uh, uh, the, the, the bounds from star cooling that I just mentioned. So you see here, these are these profiles that exactly we calculated in this way. So the white dwarfs that tend to be more constraining, but they are cut off uh, sooner. Uh, uh, the red giants that extend more, and supernova that can go all the way up to 100 uh, MeV. And then in the, in, for very heavy uh, uh, action like particle, of course, uh, stars and uh, muon uh, uh, modes uh, are non sensitive anymore. You have only the taus, although the tau is uh, not very sensitive at the moment. Uh, it's the only, uh, provides the only bound on this kind of, uh, on this kind, this kind of models uh, in the heavy uh, mass regime. And there is a substantial room for improvement from that too. So you see, there is an interplay between all the modes and the stars that at the moment seem to, uh, to provide a larger, uh, stronger constraints on, on, on these models, at least if the object is basically massless, <coughs> and the uh, low, energy, uh, low energy processes, which you see, in principle can reach very, very high energy scales. So test new physics at the level of 10 to the 10 GV. Uh, my last slide, of course, uh, we, to ask the, finally this, to, to answer this question, if the, this lepton fluorylating uh, decays can test beyond the, the, the star cooling bound, uh, as I was mentioning, you need a model that relates flavor conserving and flavor violating. Uh, couplings. We built uh, several of them. You will find it in the paper when it will be hopefully uh, released. Uh, here I'm just showing an example of a uh, actually a QCD action model. It's a so it's a it's an uh, action model or of, of the DFSZ uh, kind, so it solves the, the strong CP problem but it couples to different leptons with different uh, pH queen charges, so it is flavor violating. So depending on the kind of uh, realization, this could look like a V plus A coupling uh, to, to, to leptons axion, or V minus A. Uh, and here we, we were just plotting the usual uh, uh, axion versus uh, uh, Axion coupling to photon mass plane, so with the present and future constraints of the of the usual uh, axion experiments, and <clears throat> on this line lies our uh, flavor violating axion model, and here it stops where the uh, where there is the present white dwarf cooling bound, which is at the moment more stringent than the bound from leptonflow relation, but the future ones will go beyond that. So you see, this is an example of, of a model where uh, these low energy experiments can test new physics beyond the, uh, uh, the present bound from stars and well, test also the region that is more interesting in action model because it can provide uh, a dark matter candidate through the usual misalignment. Okay, this brings me to my conclusions. Uh, well, I hope that uh, I convinced you that these, well, a, a fairly wide class of models actually can give this kind of signature. So a pseudon go boson boson coupling to uh, leptons in a flavor violating way. So this gives rise to these interesting processes of muons or taus decaying uh, uh, into to, to something invisible and, uh, and a monochromatic uh, le lighter lepton. 
And the old limits, well, were old or not very sensitive. So there is really huge improve, room for improvement of the, uh, from modern experiment, lepton fluorovioletin, uh, ex, um, modern uh, fluorovioletin, lepton fluorovioletin experiments. <clears throat> and there is a very nice interplay between uh, among the muons, tau muons, and the astrophysical bounds. So, depending on the on the region in the parameter space on the axon like particle mass one or another can be more sensitive and in particular these are among the well as ground-based experiments uh, those that are providing uh, among the the highest possible reach in terms of a, of a new physics scale and we have examples for instance this lepton fluorelating axon models where uh, the future limits could uh, could test uh, uh, this uh, the, the, the the model uh, beyond the the stellar bounds. Uh, very well, I stop here. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Lorenzo, for that very interesting and clear talk. Do we have questions? I I see Bruce is raising his hand. So, Lorenzo, terrific talk. Thank you. Um, Thanks. Can you just, can you go back to the slide where you discussed the B potential B factory bounds and from Bell 2 and so on? It just right. went by a little quickly for me. Yeah, so, sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So, basically, yeah, well, I, I can just spend two words and then... Uh, I told you the present limits are from uh, daisy experiments of uh, well almost 30 years ago. Yeah. So the limits are the level of 10 to the minus three in the tau branching ratios. And these uh, in this paper here, well, it's actually a proceeding. Uh, two members of the Bell collaboration just performed a simulation of what could be the reach if they analyze the one inverse optogram. Bell experiment collected. Okay, so in that case, they show that basically they reach a, a limit of the order 10 to the minus four. So improving by at least one over or magnitude, well, more, factor 30 or 50. Yeah, I, to the I guess um, I was just confused by the plot on the left, which. Uh, well, um, this is just a signal over background ratio. Yeah, but it. It shows sort of below uh, as the function below of the axon like in particle mass. So you see, you yeah, lose but below one and a half TV, there's yes. the sensitivity yes. essentially disappears. Uh, no, it, it's the other way around. I mean, above 1.5 TV, you're not sensitive anymore because, well, because Sorry, you're I'm looking at all your electrons. Signal. I must be reading the plot wrong then, because that looks like signal over square root of background. Yes. Is it is it one and a half or one point three five for lower masses, which is barely oh, right, 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 which right. is barely but visible. It, yes, that's true. I mean, it's it's not great, but well, it's actually at the same level. Simply, you don't have a bound above one point five TV, because because mm. then the muon and or, or the electrons, of course, are too soft. Uh, below that, uh, you have, yeah, just two or between 1.5 and two, uh, the sensitivity is slightly better for some reason. Yeah, it no, gets there, worse for like there, There's something I'm not understanding about this. Yeah, part, which I, 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 agree. I agree. I agree. Look at more carefully. Looks... If, if that plot is taken face value, then it's a lost cause. Um, and look, yeah, I, can, they, I can I, I can well did. believe I can well believe that some naive enthusiast um, or sort of back of the envelope presentation was done, and that maybe there was insufficient care. But we uh, well, would need to I, look at this. Yeah, sure. If I well, it's here. I probably you, well, you will find also a, a link if you. If I, I I'll need to look at your slide. paper. But can I ask you a theoretical question that you should be able to to address? You, Please. you didn't speak about lepto, 
about lepton flavor violating decays of neutral mesons. Uh, so for example, D decays uh, to LL prime or such. Do you want to, yeah, are those sure. interesting in this model? Do you want to speak to that? Uh, okay, so in, well, in this case, um, so you see, um, if you have a model where your, your action light particle couples both to, to leptons and quarks, of course, you can induce something like that. Uh, the problem is that you see these kind of processes, where is it? Well, we can see it directly from my, uh, for instance, from this slide here. Uh, the good thing is that uh, of this kind of process, of this kind of two body decays is that of course you're just paying uh, once this, uh, uh, the suppression of this scale. Because I mean, your coupling goes like one over F uh, and of course in the rate you have one over F squared, right? Uh, if you instead exchange the axial light particle and you couple it, on one side to, to the quarks, on the other side to the leptons, then already at the level of the, of the amplitude, you have a one over F squared suppression. So in the rate, it would be one over the fourth power of a scale that typically is a, is a larger scale I see. because of the stellar bound. So any process where the axon light particle is, let's call it a mediator, they are hugely suppressed. Okay, so they are not relevant here. Uh, but of course, it could, uh, it could uh, uh, couple to quarks also in the flavor violating way. Um, so in such a case, you could have, uh, for instance, in the, you mentioned charm, you could have a D to pi axiom, okay? So similar processes like this. So actually, the, your, your meson is, is decaying into the, the, the flavor, uh, sorry, into the, the invisible particle and with, in a flavor violating way, um, you could have it also in the, in, the, uh, in the quark sector. So you could look for that at Bell or, or at Bess, so charm factories, B factories. Uh, actually, there are models, maybe I have a backup slides where quite similar to what I discussed at the beginning. So a frog Nielsen model. So we discussed it some years ago that frog Nielsen uh, uh, models can actually provide a, a, a axon. So this, that some people call famulon, so the pseudo-nambugoston boson actually also couples to, uh, to gluons via, <coughs> via uh, anomalous coupling. So it provides a, a solution for the uh, strong CP problem. This object here, uh, the phenomenology of this object here is precisely given uh, mostly by the case of this kind, K to pi axion, B to K on axion, or D to pi. <coughs> and there are searches, especially for the K on MA62, Will improve by yeah. One if, of the if those numbers. are the if those are the couplings and the kions yes, will beat exactly. you every time. And you can have also d to pi, of course. At the moment, for this specific model, the most stringent is the is the bound from the kions. So at the level already of more almost ten to the eleven GV in the in the in the axion became constant. Uh, these were the present bound, and NA62 should improve by almost two orders of magnitude. <clears throat> uh, so, but yeah, just to answer your, your, your question again, I don't expect you can have anything interesting if you exchange these axion like particles. So, in the case of lepton fluorulation, what matters is really just the leptons decay. Uh, but of course, if, if your model involves uh, flavor violation also in the quark sector, then a bunch of exotic decays uh, that will provide the, the, the signature for, for this kind of, uh, of, of physics. 
<clears throat> okay, thank you very much. I think Ulrich has a question. Yeah. Yeah, I just wondered why you did not in the experimental prospects mention the uh, muon to electron conversion experiments, uh, so COMET uh, in Japan and uh, mu to e uh, at Fermilab, because since they are from the outset looking for single electrons, uh, I, I would kind of naively expect that they could probably set uh, significantly better limits than the mu to 3e that you were considering. Uh, well, thanks for the question. Actually, uh, I didn't mention them basically just for lack of time. I have some backup slides about that. Well, as you mentioned already, the, 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 the process they are looking for has a, a single electron. In these cases, they have a negative muons, so this is an electron. Um, yeah. Of course, the, the, the electron is, I mean, the muon gets captured, so the electron, um, the, 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 the spectrum is different, so it has to phase <coughs> the ordinary uh, decay in orbit of a muon, so the, the standard model tail extends basically almost up to the muon mass, okay? So there were, and they will have an astonishing number of muons, this is true. The point is that they also need a dedicated search. Uh, you cannot really use the results for a mutual conversion and, I mean, use it as a, to, 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 to set the constraint of this as a byproduct. And this was shown already several years ago by this study. And the reason is precisely that what I was mentioning. So, they have this very long tail. So if you zoom at the end of the spectrum of the electron, so they have this red line, which is their, 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 their background, the decay in orbit. And, and their signal is precisely there. Okay, so the, the signal for mutual conversion would be this uh, black line. And precisely to distinguish from the background, they really focus on this window, which is above 100 MeV or, 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 or even larger. So really at the end point. So now if you basically look uh, what would be your signal to for, uh, for the decay into, into a major or a family or whatever, these people show that you can basically rescale at the sensitivity of mutual conversion <clears throat> in terms of a sensitivity of mu to e action like particle, just using some phase space correction, uh, etc. And what you get is uh, basically a, a limit which is, well, just at the level of the present bound. Okay, so does not improve on, on, on the present bound, uh, even for. Uh, like uh, a sensitivity on, on, on mutual conversion at, at the level of 10 to the minus 17, which is one of the, the final goal of that. And precisely because, I mean, your signal, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, no, the, the, I, guess, I, I, think that's, I think that's pretty yeah. obvious. I think what more the, more yeah. the, uh, the question is that, um, that- So you, you really know, need a dedicated is, search. Exactly, but yeah, you, no, this is but a you have. Yeah, but you still have to fight this very long tail of the muon decay in orbit, which gives exactly the same, mimics the signal. So I don't know really how you can disentangle the two. Uh, well, of course, you can look for a bump everywhere if you really model very well the, the, the muon decay in orbit. Uh, but it's also difficult to simulate it because when you have 10 to the 17 muons, really to have a, a reliable Monte Carlo. So um, I think we will need to talk to them. Mm. Oh, no, no. So, I completely agree. Um, mm. I might ask the, the other people. Yeah, for sure they, 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 they plan also to do this spin-off project because all experiments need to find a, a little bit, extend a little bit more the physics case, although they, they measure something very well with very good precision. Typically, they have to show funding agencies that they can broaden a bit the spectrum of new physics that they can test. So they will be definitely interested in looking at that, but uh, it may be experimentally challenging. Thanks. 
Okay. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. I think we are quite past the hour. So I would say we <laughs> finish the official part of the <laughs> seminar so that anyone who wants to leave can leave. But if there are more questions, I think Lorenzo is probably still happy to answer. Sure, them. sure. Yeah, so thanks a lot uh, once more, Lorenzo, for your nice talk. Thanks to everybody. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh, maybe, Lorenzo, I can... Well, with the star cooling, can I ask you one question?